Good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. I don't know if um, we are going live or not, but I am going to go on and get started. Um, I keep seeing this thing going round and round <laughs> on my computer, but I am going to um, press forward. I have been in prayer, and I'm, and I'm ready to, to start talking to you about what God has put on my heart. So, we know that today is Resurrection Sunday, right? And many of us have at least some concept of what that is, what that means, what that stands for. And, and to put it simply, which is not a simple thing, but to put it simply, it is the resurrection, the rising up of Jesus after his death, right? Um, it is a revival of something or someone. When you, when you look at the definition of resurrection, we're talking about revival, we're talking about renewal, we're talking about uh, regeneration, right? Uh, resuscitation, right? Which is normally what happens when you put life into something, right? Amen. So today we are celebrating the uh, resuscitation of Jesus and the impact that that actually has on our lives. And we do so by... Um, going to church mostly gathering together somewhere and just uh honoring uh, the sacrifice that was made for us um, during this season and on this day so the question we have to kind of wrestle with today that, that the spirit of the lord has put on my heart is how does today this resurrection sunday this resurrection resurrection i'm sorry activity how does it impact those who ascribe to a belief in jesus christ You know, I know we hear a lot about how it impacts us. We talk about life everlasting and, and those who are in Jesus shall not die, but should have life everlasting. But what I really want to talk about today is how, what, what, does that, what does that look like? You know, what does that mean? We usually speak of a time when we die and shall later be given a new life or rebirth, if you prefer that. We, we used to call it gazing. You know, you say folks are so busy gazing at the heavens that they can't operate down here. Right? They can't do the work that's needed down here. So that's what we usually talk about. We usually talk about a time of a, a promise, basically, of life everlasting, a, a promise of, of, um, of life being on the table for us. We do not have to fear death because Jesus indeed has overcome that. But when Jesus tells Martha what he tells her in John 11, 25 and 26, it goes a little deeper than that. So let's walk in that for a little bit today. I'm not going to keep you long. Um, it's a beautiful day, and I know it, again, is Resurrection Sunday. So Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Right? He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that puts his trust in me will live even if he dies, and everything living and trusting in me will never die. So even if he, if he dies with this body, he indeed is still alive. He indeed is still living, right? He will live, right? And that's what Jesus was telling Martha when she was she was kind of frantic about her brother um, dying and, and trying to rush Jesus and wonder why well, he wasn't there. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life, right? So when we talk about um, the word trust, some, some, some scriptures have it uh, as something else, but but when I search and I try, I try to search and compare scriptures and and uh, where they come from. So this scripture, this particular scripture, talked about trust because it's kind of closer to the Hebraic meaning, and it says trust is a firm belief in the reliability, the truth, or strength of someone or something toward us. All right? Trust is confidence in the honesty, integrity of a person or thing. It's also something that we can do. We can place our trust in someone. So we can place our trust in something in the care of another person or in a situation that is deemed safe. And that's kind of like all things working together for our good. We trust you, Jesus. We trust the Lord. We trust God. We trust the Holy Spirit to lead in God. Amen. So basically, if we trust in Jesus, that's what the scripture is saying, we shall not die. But trust, again, is an active word. 
Trust requires positioning. Trust requires activity. Trust requires um, putting something on the table that demonstrates that trust. You know, we can't just say we trust God and then we do nothing that demonstrates that trust. We mess up sometimes with this because we focus on the doctrine. But we forget to focus on the doctor. The doctor of life. So, so again, go back to the scripture. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Why are you, why are you frowning, Mark? I, I, I'm the one that creates this. I'm the one that brings life. I'm the giver of life. So why would you be tripping out? Why would you be crazy, running crazy? Because your brother has passed and I am physically not there. When I am the one that gives life. He said, why are you worried about your brother's life? I'm the resurrector. I'm the life giver. I am the embodiment of life. And there's no death for those who trust, who obey, who follow, who believe in me. We tend to focus on the resurrection and not the resurrector. The one with all power in his hand. Right? We focus on the activity of being resurrected. And that, that, that helps us with our fear of, of death. When, when there's all opportunity to do preemptive things, right, that can guarantee us that we will not be a victim of death. Right? We need to shift sometimes from believing more in the living God over the doctrine that's associated with the living God. Mm, my God, okay. We are concerned about the distant future, distant future, you know? But like squirrels, we don't gather on this for the winter or for the hard times. So if, we, if we're concerned about the distant future, we ought to be planting something today that can guarantee that there is a distant future. Instead of gazing into the heavens, right? Feeling self-assured that something we have not invested in is invested in us. Mm, my God, I'm gonna say that again. We need to be sure that we are investing in whatever we want to invest in us. We need to stop waiting on a resurrection of our lives and start living, hallelujah, resurrected lives right now, today. We need to grab hold of whatever is dead, whatever is dead in us and take today as a starting point to resurrect that thing. We need to be resurrected from our fears, our angers, our unbelief, our laziness, our, our, our lies, our false doctrine that we hold so near and dear, our bad attitudes that we think don't have anything to do with our life, our stankiness, our impatience, our hate, our lovelessness, our whining, our insecurities, our, our lack of investment in those things that we are told mm, demonstrate a connection to something greater than us. Not by mouth, but by deed. Right? Not by word, but by deed. We need to res resurrect from gazing at the heavens, worrying about death and how it's going to overtake us. Worrying about death and how somebody has passed on. But quoting scriptures that say trust, but we have not even attempted to trust. We waver back and forth. And on this Resurrection Sunday, we need to stand firm. We need to stand firm and know that Jesus is not an event in the distant future. He's right now. We need to know and live like we know that death is not greater than the Jesus that created it and that controls it. There's a difference between belief in doctrine and genuine sincere belief in Jesus. We like grace because grace lets us know that we can be forgiven for whatever we do. 
So we're okay with grace. We're okay with anything that is pouring into us. But we need to be people that pour into our own selves so that we can position ourselves to receive and to become those things that God has called us to become. One of the things uh, we, we can practice is, is having faith, oh my God, that is based on our belief in a redeemer and not necessarily based on our reading of a Bible, which sometimes we just don't understand. You know, um, Some people will call that blind faith and I say, I'm okay with that. You know, Connect with the spirit inside of you and, and grab a hold of that. And once you start grabbing a hold of that, and once you start tracking and tracing God, the faith that's in your belly is going to erect. And then you can read the Bible and understand it. Then you can understand uh, what, what people are saying in cold, you know, or, or scriptures that people are referring to. But if you just pick up and read the Bible, sometimes you just you just can't get it that way. Right? So this is a this is an opportunity to resurrect that which we've so desired. It's an opportunity not to get frustrated and just throw it away and say, I don't understand it. Those people make me sick. Those people think they're better. Those people, those people, those people. Right? Jesus said, in me. So in me, the dead are already alive. Right? I am the resurrection. I am the life. Who are you waiting on to come wake up your brother? I am. He. Who are you waiting on? So you, a union with God is, is uninterrupted by death. It's independent of death. And once we get that, I think we become more courageous. We become more willing um, to step out. And so again, it's Resurrection Sunday. I know everybody is out enjoying uh, the warm weather, but I, I also wanted to remind us to, that we should be in prayer for a resurrection to happen in us. You know, it's okay to be excited about what is to come once you die. It's okay to be uh, assured that there is a, a state of, of, of passing on that is going to allow you to continue life. And, and not the life you're living now, but life more abundantly, life more, more heavily in communion with that which is pure, that which is good, that which is, is, which is enriching and encouraging. It's okay to be excited about that. But our challenge, I believe, as believers in something greater than us, something higher than us, something that um, runs through our very veins, our challenge is to pray that we are helped. Mm. We are helped independent of any death that we are concerned about. That we are helped to be all that we're supposed to be. That we are helped to serve the way we're supposed to serve. That we are helped to become that thing worthy. Ha, ah, thank you. Hallelujah. Worthy of resurrection upon our death. So today I'm just, I'm just, I've been praying and, and just asking people to pray that Jesus will help us more, more, more strongly while we are yet among the physical living, right? Help us be that which we are supposed to be while we are yet among the physical living. Resurrect our tired souls, O oh Lord. Resurrect our dead faith. Resurrect our dead trust, our dead relationships, our dead dreams, our dead hopes, our dead purpose, our dead future, our dead obedience, our dead lives. Otherwise, if we are allowing ourselves to be dead, What's the point of Resurrection Sunday? If we don't connect with God and ask him to render us the power with his help to resurrect those things that we have given up on, to resurrect those opportunities to do something great. To, if, if you want to write a book and you're led to write a book and because you can't figure out how to publish it, you stop doing it, ask God to resurrect that thing. Because there's a reason you were supposed to write that book. If you feel like you love God, but you're sick of this struggle, so something must not be right, 
Ask God to resurrect that faith in you. Ask him to resurrect your eyesight so you can see him moving, so you can track and trace him, so you can get the heck out of the way and let him be God and let him lead and let him guide and still try to tell God what to do. We have to be willing to ride in a passenger seat with God. We like control and we have to be willing to ride in a passenger seat. And sometimes we just don't get it right. We just have to keep getting up there until we can get it right. It's like riding a horse. You never learn unless you keep getting on a horse so you can get thrown off. But again, today is Resurrection Sunday. It's one of the biggest celebrations that Christians engage in worldwide. And I challenge each and every one of us to take a moment today to ask God to resurrect those things that he has placed in us to be fruitful, that he has placed in us to grow, that he has placed in us for our brothers and sisters to support them, that he has placed in us for purpose. Ask him today to resurrect that for you. So then the day and there will be no doubt that you are walking in trust, you are walking in faith, and you are walking in obedience to who is the resurrection, the giver of life, and you don't have to wait till you die. Amen. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Thank you guys for dropping in and all praises to God. Amen.